So I invite you to read the scripture in unison with me from Hebrews and hear the word of God as we read it together. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways, but now he speaks to us by his Son. All these ancestors of faith were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. These were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised, since God had planned something better for us, so that only together with us would they be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. The word of the Lord. Speak to God. You may be seated. <laughs> Have you ever had someone who points to the voices of the past and asks you to listen to them? The voices of experience. Uh, I remember as a young minister, I was in Montreat for probably our first vacation after I was ordained, and I visited visited a friend of my family who had retired in Montreat, a minister, and he took me to his library. He gave me some books that were real treasures for me, but then he also gave me some cassettes. Now, some people don't even know what cassettes are anymore, but he gave me some cassettes of recordings of Dr. Peter Marshall's sermons, and they were just amazing. Even today, if you listen to some of Dr. Peter Marshall's sermons, they are amazing. Peter Marshall was the chaplain of the United States Senate. He was a Presbyterian minister, pastor of New York Avenue Presbyterian Church in Washington, D.C., but he was pastor of the United States Senate during World War II, and his prayers were heard throughout the country on the radio as he prayed for our country, and he also prayed uh, for uh, the war efforts and for our legislature. Uh, he was an amazing guy, and perhaps one of the greatest Presbyterian ministers of the last century. He is the one who started the Kirkin of the Tartan ceremonies that we have in our church every year. And I loved hearing his prayers on cassette tape and hearing his sermons, and they inspired me and they also gave me a lot of perspective. And that's what listening to the voices of the past do for us. They give us perspective. We will listen to the voices of today. We will listen to the voices of people who say, this is the trend coming up. We have to listen to those whether we want to or not. But listening to the voices of the past to give us perspective on our day and on the future is something we have to make ourselves do. And I think it's very important. This is really the point of our passage that we read from Hebrews. You have all these people of the past who still speak to us today. That's what he's saying. These people still speak to our situation today, our souls. And we ought to have ears to hear what they have to say. The voice of Jesus, his example but also the voices of the saints of old that can inspire us as they follow Jesus. Memorial Day is what some people call Remembrance Day. It's a day to remember those who have gone in the past and sacrificed themselves for our freedom in the armed services to preserve us as a nation, to preserve our freedoms, including the freedom to worship. 
The sacrifices people made pulling together was not just the sacrifice of those in the armed services, but the whole country sacrifice in World War II, for example. And this, I, I wasn't around then. It's hard for me to, to think about it, but rationing of food like sugar, rationing of goods like tires and aluminum, those are hard things that we should not take for granted or forget. Woodrow Wilson, who was the son of a Presbyterian minister and and president, said, a nation that does not remember what it was yesterday does not know what it is today, nor what it is trying to do. We lose our sense of purpose. We lose our sense of direction if we do not know our past and we cannot tell our trajectory or where we hope to go. I believe this is true as a nation, but it's also true of the church. It's also true of families. It's also true as individuals. We need to think about our past in order to know where we're going in our future. And this is the point of Hebrews. He gave all these examples. We didn't even we cut off about three-fourths of them. All these people of old who lived godly lives and followed Jesus and follow God, we're inspired. And they are inspiring to us today if we look at their lives and the sacrifices they have made. And if you look at them and you see how they went through their storms in their lives, how they went through their problems, how they persevered, it can help us to persevere through the problems that we face. And if you haven't faced any problems, you will. Everybody has problems. Everybody faces storms. And so he says in our passage in Hebrews, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, for the joy who set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Don't grow weary. Don't lose heart. And one way you do that is by looking at those who endured, and they can inspire you to endure, inspire you to hold on through the storms and the problems and the heartaches of life. It is important to remember. Remember the saints of old, the great cloud of witnesses that should inspire us And are looking down on us. I think the the Hebrew word stadia is there. The Greek word stadia is there. Saying that the people of old are like looking down on us from above. Pulling for us and rooting for us to keep the faith. To bear fruit for Christ in our lives. Perhaps remembering is why Jesus said when he instituted the, the Lord's Supper. He said, do this in remembrance of me, remembering my body, remembering my blood. It is important to remember. And when Jesus was instituting the Lord's Supper, he was celebrating another remembrance. He was celebrating the Passover. And every year, even today, the Jews celebrate the Passover, remembering that God saved them from slavery by the blood of the Lamb. By sacrifice. On Memorial Day, we look back with gratitude on those who sacrificed themselves for the freedom of our country. That is very important. But the idea of sacrifice is not limited to those. It's also included in our faith. People have sacrificed for us to be here 2,000 miles away, 2,000 years later, to be here sitting in these pews, sitting in this church, Worshiping the same Lord. Somebody passed the faith on and somebody endured and persevered and kept the faith so that we could also have faith. And we are called also to endure and to keep the faith and remember the sacrifices with gratitude. Sixty million people died in World War II. Sixteen million Americans fought in World War II. Today, 697,000 are still alive. If you are a World War II veteran, would you raise your hand? 
Are there any here today? There are none here today. Just a few years ago, there would be some here. I think we still have a couple of members, but their health is fading and and they're not always here in worship with us. 697,000 are alive today. Three years ago, it was twice that number. The number is starting to fade. It is important to remember those who sacrificed for us. One of the busiest airports in the world, one I've been to many times, is O'Hare Airport in Chicago. But a lot of people go, like I did, go into O'Hare Airport in Chicago, and we don't know who it was named after. It was named after a guy named Butch O'Hare. Butch O'Hare was the first aviator to receive the Medal of Honor. He was flying a sortie during World War II with his fighter group, and he realized he was running out of gas. His gas had not been filled to the top, and so his uh, commander told him to turn around and go back to the carrier group. And when he went back to the carrier, carrier group, he saw a plethora just hundreds of Japanese fighters heading right toward his carrier group. He didn't know what to do. He tried to call a squadron. They didn't answer. He tried to call the carrier group. They didn't answer. So he decided that he would just have to do this single-handedly. So he single-handedly just dove into these hundreds of fighters, hundreds of Japanese fighters, with his guns blazing until he ran out of ammunition. And then after he ran out of ammunition, he kept going back and forth through the fighter group and harassed them so much that they decided to go off in another direction. That's how O'Hare Airport got its name. But do you know where Butch O'Hare got his inspiration? He got his inspiration from his father, Ed. But his father, Ed, didn't start off being so inspiring. His father, Ed, uh, actually was a lawyer for Al Capone. Al Capone, as you know, he... He uh, did a lot of illegal activity. He owned all the prostitution rings. He was in charge of the Valentine's Day Massacre. He he killed Bugs Malone's gang. He was in charge of gambling in Chicago, bootlegging. He had uh, a very lucrative, illegal, and violent business. And Eddie O'Hare, Easy Eddie was his nickname, managed to get Al Capone off every time. But Easy Eddie had a problem. The problem was he loved his son Butch. And he wanted to teach his son right from wrong while at the same time getting Al Capone off of these bad things. So Easy Eddie decided that for the sake of his son, to teach his son right from wrong, even though he knew he was sacrificing everything he owned and perhaps his life, he would testify against Al Capone. He did testify Al Capone against Al Capone, and shortly after that, he was gunned down in the streets of Chicago. Butch O'Hare never forgot the example of his father, that there are some things that are worth doing because it's the right thing to do. And there's more to life than just being selfish and trying for your own comfort. There are greater causes than yourself. That is important for us to remember today and to give ourselves to the greater causes of life, the cause of our country, the cause of our faith, the everlasting cause. Remember the faithful. Remember them with gratitude. Grateful people have good memories. Grateful people remember those who have gone before them and they don't forget even in the storms and the problems of life. Remember and choose to remember. Make the choice to remember the good people who have persevered, who have kept the faith, who set good examples. Those of you who, those who have failed but then get back up and start again and end well, and finish the race, and keep the faith. Remember those folks. There are a lot of of bad people you can remember. The bad people are held before our eyes quite frequently as if their badness means nothing at all. 
But remember those who keep the faith and do not give up. They can inspire us to do more. They can inspire us, inspire us to trust in God. And that's why this Hebrews is there for us. Remember Moses and David. and uh, David failed, but David got back up and repented and, and tried again. Remember those who came back and did not give up. Rick Warren wrote a great devotional this past week on the Apostle Paul and how Paul wrote to the Philippians and he said, I thank God when I give remembrance for you and for the help that you gave me. I thank God every time I remember you, he was saying. Now, the Philippians were not Paul's most pleasant experience. The Philippians actually was one of Paul's most terrifying experiences. Paul went to Philippi. They arrested him. In Philippi, they said he was thrown to the lions there in the stadium. He was uh, uh, beaten. He was thrown in jail. He was uh, persecuted falsely as a Roman citizen. And in jail, he faced an earthquake, survived the earthquake. And then after all that, he was asked to leave the town. And yet Paul says to the Philippians, I give thanks for you. What was he doing? He was choosing to remember them in a certain way. He could have said, oh, I remember that earthquake, and I remember when you beat me, and I remember when y'all threw me to the lions. But he doesn't say any of that. He says, I thank God for you. He's remembering them in a certain positive way. He's choosing to remember the good. And you have a choice too. Where your focus lies. Do you focus on the negative and the bad or do you focus on the good? I invite you to focus on the good. Paul said as much when he wrote Philippians 4 8. He said, Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is good, think about such things. Think about the good and the true, and the noble. Remember those things and focus on those who've lived lives that are inspiring to you. And it can springboard you into the future. You can enter the future with hope. You can enter the future knowing that they survived and you can survive. They survived the storms, you can survive the storms. The voices of old tell us to trust in God in the good and the bad times, and you know that it's good to do that. Listen to the godly voices of old and build your future on that. It is the same God who served them that serves us. He is the God of the past, but he's also God of the present and the future. He is the Alpha and the Omega. We walk on the same earth. We have the same basic DNA, and it is the same God who rescues us and helps us. And we should keep the faith and pass that faith on. God is not just a God of the past. He is the God of today, but he was God of the past too, and so we can learn from them without fear. I have a graduation story to tell you since it's also the week that many graduate, graduate, and it's a a way to remember something that happened just a year ago. Tell you about Katisha Breland. I don't think she's any relation to Ben. Katisha grew up in the church. She had parents who loved her and grew up in Charleston. Parents who sacrificed for her, but they weren't perfect parents. Who who is a perfect parent? And as she grew up, she met people who thought it was old-fashioned to have godly values. She went to Francis Marion College, and there her faith kind of faded into the background. And she didn't focus on her faith, and she ended up getting pregnant and dropping out of Francis Marion College. And for some people, that would be it. But Katisha did not give up. With the help of people in her church who welcomed her back, just like they welcomed back the prodigal, they welcomed her back. She got back on her feet, and she got a good job. Last year, last May, she graduated from Claflin University with a scholarship from the Methodist Church. She graduated with the support of her church, St. Patrick's Church in Charleston, and she graduated against all odds. And you know what else? She graduated with the daughter 
that she gave birth to at Francis Marion College. Great story, an inspiring story, one to remember. You can always come back, you can persevere in your faith, and you can do more than you think you can do on your own. Do not forget who you are, whose you are. Do not forget the Lord. Do not forget that you are his. What is it like to forget? I think forgetting is one of the worst things that can happen in life. And as a pastor, one of the worst things that I have done is go to people who have had strokes and, and won't get well from those strokes or go to people who have dementia or Alzheimer's and cannot remember and try to minister to those folks. They cannot remember. And it's so sad. It's so very, very, very sad. It is sad to forget your loved one's name. It's sad to forget your own name. It's sad to forget where you're from, who your past is. And it's sad if you have to forget God, too. My father had dementia, and I can remember the first week we put him in the Presbyterian home in, the, in what is what would have been the Alzheimer's unit. Uh, I was sitting in there in the room with him, and this lady walked into his room, and I said, ma'am, who are you? She said, this is my husband. She pointed to my father. And I thought, well, that's news to me. <laughs> but she forgot who she was, you know, and this is a pretty common thing in Alzheimer's units, and, uh, and my father didn't know who I was, who he was. It's so sad to forget who you are. And yet there are people today who on purpose forget who they are. They have Alzheimer's of the soul. How can we forget the one who gave us life on purpose? How can we forget the one who came to earth to save us and to give us a second chance? Remember Jesus who sacrificed for you. Remember all the saints who gave themselves so that you could be here today. Keep the faith and pass it on. Do not forget. Remember with gratitude. Amen.